South African Championship Motor Racing return to the Aldo Scrabat. Youngsters Marco de Santos and Andrew Turnbull sharing the honours. It was a race against time. I think I've performed a small miracle. They, they've hardly slept since last Saturday. They only left Wednesday um, in the afternoon. They arrived here Thursday morning at half past three. And they haven't stopped since then. Um, you know, with a bad accident like that, you think you've got most things sorted out, but every time you go to the car, there's something else that's, uh, that, that's not quite the way you would like it. An official practice for the West Bank modified touring cars produced problems for the Rothmans Audi team. When the Terry Moss car was wheeled into the pits, an ominous oil slick pointed towards a major problem. Moss is the reigning West Bank champion, but with only one win so far this season, has not had a happy time. A quick look out of the bonnet and Moss walked away shaking his head. A gaping hole signified one destroyed engine block and a race against time to change engines before official qualifying. On the points front, Saro Fanabava, in search of his first saloon car title, arrived at Aldo Scribanti with a healthy 46-point lead over Ben Morganrood. Sassol are proud sponsors of the Ford and Mazda West Bank modified touring car teams. On the tight Aldo Scribanti circuit, a good grid position is of the utmost importance. Aldo Scribanti is Saro Fanabava's home circuit, and there was an air of confidence in the Sassol Ford team. While Saro Fanabava, Ben Morganrood and Chris Aberdeen prepared for battle against the stopwatch, Terry Moss was cooling his heels in the pits. Mechanics were hard at work on the second Rothmans Audi. Just changed the engine because uh, we had some mechanical trouble with the other one. So we we're trying to get it done for qualifying. Yeah, it's not, not easy in a situation like this because in the workshop we always work on nice conditions and there's always the problems of finding things that you don't expect. But, uh, well, we're coping. Time is a bit short, but we'll make it. It's a bit hectic at the moment, but uh, I think that's why we're all in motorsport, is to uh, try and keep things going for our drivers. Out on the circuit, Sorrel van Abava in the Sassel Ford Mustang was setting the early pace, but finding the 7-litre Ford something of a handful on the tight track. Morgan Rood was also going well with the Sassel Mazda's distinctive banshee wail echoing around Aldo Scribanti. There was little to choose between the lap times being set up by Funamava and Morgenrood, with Peter Lindenberg setting the early pace in Class B in the Gestetler Opel record. Back in the pits, more problems for Audi, with the Moss car refusing to start. After a couple of blistering laps, Funamava quietly parked the Sassel Ford Mustang. Morgenrood's fastest lap in the Sassel Mazda MX-6 was just three hundredths of a second quicker than Funamava's best lap in the Sassel Ford Mustang. The two Sassel drivers were under the impression they'd done enough to secure the front row of the grid. I never really expected pole. I thought the Audis would get it and uh, it looked good for a while and then Ben came and he beat me by 300. So uh, I think we're in for a good race tomorrow. I must say I always expect pole. Um, if I get into the car without expecting pole, it's a negative attitude and that don't work. Their celebrations were quickly cut short. Chris Aberdeen sneaked out late in the session and put the Rothmans Audi on pole position, much to the chagrin of Morgan Rood and Funamava. Audi team manager Bernie Mariner was quickly on the phone to home base in Newtonhague. You're still in the office. Okay, I still got, just let you know that Aberdeen got on the pole by half a second ahead to the, these other two guys. Uh, Teddy's car had a problem, but uh, we were busy fixing it. He can start at the back of the grid, I don't think. His other gang will be a sweat once you get the car sorted out. Earlier on, Ben was a bit quicker, but Anyway, I did a, my first lap and it, it was only a tenth off pole, but I was third on the grid. So I went and had another try and uh, we put a bit of wing, more wing on the car and I managed to go a good half a second quicker, which has got us on pole. Which is great, it ends the day well after rolling the Jetta this morning. I think uh, pole position for tomorrow and uh, hopefully two wins tomorrow will be great. Counting chickens before they hatch is a dangerous business in motor racing. A late flurry also saw Willie Hepburn snatch pole position from Peter Lindenberg in Class B. 
Qualifying for classes C and D also produced problems for class C frontrunner Steve Windham in the dealer team for heat one of the West Bank Challenge for classes A and B with an AC Cobra leading the cars around. Chris Aberdeen is in pole position in the Rothmans Audi. The drivers are weaving around to build up heat in the slick racing tyres and there we have a race cam view of the Terry Moss car. Moss will start at the back of the grid after his problems in qualifying. Around they come onto the main straight. It's up to Aberdeen to control the pace of the start and none of the other drivers are allowed to get ahead of the pole position man before they cross the start line. The lights are green and an awful lot of horsepower has been unleashed and immediately Terry Moss is up into fourth spot ahead of Larry Wolford. Aberdeen has the lead followed by Fadamava and Morgan Rood. Moss is up to fourth with Wolford fifth. Lindenberg is sixth with Dennis Althoff behind him in the second Gestechner car. A high-speed train with Aberdeen out in front. Funamava is under pressure from Morganrood but moves out to block the Mazda. Funamava's experience comes into play there. Moss is right in there with the second Audi and is trying to find a way around Morganrood. Aberdeen has eked out a slight edge over Funamava in the Sassel Ford Mustang as they come up towards the end of lap one. The Aberdeen, Rothmans Audi and Funamava are followed by Morganrood with Moss climbing all over him. Larry Wilford is fifth in the privately entered Nordson Audi with Willie Hepburn leading Class B in the Sabat Opel V8. The cars are still closely bunched with a great race developing behind Aberdeen. The four-wheel drive Audis have an advantage on this circuit and Morgan Root got a little crossed up there and still has Moss right on his tail. And we have a car in the pits. That's Dennis Altoff in the Gestetner Ford Mustang. Oh dear, that looks terminal and expensive. On board with Terry Moss, who's still trying to find a way around Ben Morganrood, who's chasing after Sorrel Fonamava. Chris Aberdeen has opened up a slight lead, but the race is on behind him between three of the most aggressive drivers in the country. Race cam action from the Morganrood Sassel Mazda, and Terry Moss has hurtled up the outside. Can Moss drive around Morganrood? The two cars are side by side and almost touching as they come into the main straight. Morganrood had the tighter line and could get the power down sooner and is still in third place behind Chris Aberdeen and Saro Funamava. Back in the pits, they're wheeling away the old Toff Mustang. I don't know. Could see now. Just went off soft. Back to the action and Chris Aberdeen in the Rothmans Audi is pulling away from Funamava. The gap between first and second is slowly increasing and more race cam action as Terry Moss has another go at getting past Ben Morganrood. This time Moss has the inside line and Moss is through into third place. Now he'll have his sights set on Funamava, but Moss will also have to watch his back. Funamava, Moss and Morganrood in tandem. They tie together and this time Moss is going to try and drive around Funamava. It's a brave move, but even though that doesn't work, Rothman's Audi team manager Bernie Mariner looks happy enough. So he should be, with Chris Aberdeen taking control of this race and Terry Moss up into third. Through comes Willie Hepburn at the head of the Class B field in the Sabat Opel. Peter Lindenberg is a long way behind in the Gestetner Opel, but here's Moss having another go at Funamava on the outside. Funamava won't let him get away with that and Morgan Rood is fighting back. The crowd is loving every moment of the Funamava Moss Morganrood battle, and they're at it again. What have they got in store for us this time? Moss is trying on the outside again, but Funamava forces him wide, and Morganrood has taken the opportunity to slip through on the inside of the Rothmans Audi. Morganrood has won back third place. A great piece of opportunistic driving from Morganrood, but Moss will want third place back. They're on the last lap, and time is running out for Moss as he tries on the outside yet again. The checkered flag is out for Chris Aberdeen, Funabava will be second, but third and fourth is anyone's race in a blanket finish. Moss it is who just puts Morganrood on the line, but what a race for second, third and fourth. Audi congratulates Chris Aberdeen on a fine West 40 with Peter Lindenberg, great scrap and veteran Richie Jew to sneak through on the inside. Car fights back as Jude puts a wheel on the curbing, but Jude manages to hold his line. Here's Class D leader Charles Wilkin in the dealer team Toyota Sprinter. Wilkin is the reigning Class D champion and has set the pace in the class throughout the season. 
Joaquin has opened up a slight gap on Patrick Seddon in the Jackson's Delta Opal Cadet. Ray Wilford is third with Basil Maunder fourth, both of them in VW Golfs, as Wilkin steams past the pits with Seddon in hot pursuit. And up front, the order is unchanged, with Wyndham leading for Zaytnote, Jute and Carr. We're into the closing stages of the race and Wyndham has broken away from George Bezatnote and company. Tire problems could be a factor but Wyndham has certainly shifted up a gear and has this one in the bag. George Bezatnote has dropped a long way back but he's in a safe second with Keith Carr and Richie Jute in the battle of the BMWs behind him. The final corner for Steve Wyndham in the dealer team Toyota Sprinter. Wyndham is out of the championship race, but he chalks up another win for Toyota. George Bezatnote will be delighted with two second places on the day. Keith Carr finally has the better of Richie Jute and will be third. Charles Wilkin is fifth overall in the Toyota Sprinter and again wins Class D ahead of Patrick Seddon. First heat is anything to go by. The crowd can look forward to some more tremendous racing. Chris Aberdeen leads the pack across the line and already Terry Moss in the second Rothmans Audi is making a move. We go to the race camp with Ben Morganrood as Terry Moss forces his way past Sorrel Funamava on the inside. Moss has muscled his way past the Sassel Ford Mustang and Morganrood is going the same route. Morganrood's also through and Funamava is back to fourth behind the two Rothmans Audis and Morganrood. Hey, the two Rothmans Audis are out in front and the home crowd is loving it. And now Moss is mounting an attack on Aberdeen. Moss is up on the inside of his teammate. Moss is up on the curb and there's contact between the two Audis, but Moss has forced his way into the lead. <laughs> Willie Hepburn in the Sabat Opal record is again leading Class B ahead of Peter Lindenberg, but the crowd's only interested in the battle of the big bangers, and they're going wild with the two Rothmans Audis out in front and hometown favourite Terry Moss in the lead. There's been action aplenty on lap one as Moss leads Aberdeen with Morgan Root third and Funamava fourth. The Sassel Ford Mustang sliding around and Funamava looks to have a tyre problem. Ben Morgan Root and the Sassel Mazda have six Westbank modified touring car wins to their credit. Will it be number seven today? Back to the action and Terry Moss has opened up a slight gap on Rothman's Audi teammate Chris Aberdeen. Ben Morgan Root's holding on in third place, but Sorrel Funamava has gone missing from the leading quartet. Morgan Root's sticking with Aberdeen, but the four-wheel drive Audi has a big advantage. And Sorrel Funamava is cruising around in the Mustang. Funamava has a major problem. It's probably a recurrence of the fuel pressure problem he had in the warm-up. Out in front, the order's unchanged, with Terry Moss leading Chris Aberdeen and Ben Morgan Root. Willie Hepburn leads Peter Lindenberg in Class B, but the big V8s are battling with traction in the corners. Some sections of the crowd are a little rowdier than others, but everyone is enjoying some fine racing. Sorrel Funamava might not agree, and now he has a major problem. Larry Wilford in the privately entered Nordson Audi has closed right up on the Sassel Ford. Funamava leads the championship, and he needs every point he can get. Funamava manages to stay ahead of Wilford down the straight, but he won't be able to hold off the Nordson Audi much longer. The Ford is simply cruising around, and there's a break for Funamava as Wilford goes wide at Repco Bend. That eases the pressure on the final lap with Class B leader Willie Hepburn about to be lapped by race leader Terry Moss in the Rothmans Audi. Moss is cruising to victory ahead of Chris Aberdeen. It's only Moss's second win of the season as out comes the chequered flag. Chris Aberdeen is second with a great result for Rothman's Audi with Ben Morgan Root third and Sorrel Funamava cruising around to fourth place. Willie Hepburn again takes class B. I wanted to win for the home crowd. I needed a win. The threats are too great here in the crowd. So I got it done. I'm happy and my chief engineer, Mike Barnard, he seems even happier than I am because it was a great success for us. Thank you. West Bank thanks the following companies for making this production possible.
Rothmans Racing will be back.